This Barbie is excited to talk about Bridgerton! <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. If you have come back again, thank you guys so much. It's been a hot minute since I've frozen on YouTube, but I'm very excited because this is a very exciting month that is coming up. For anybody who knows me personally or is familiar to my TikTok channel, you guys know that Bridgerton is one of my favorite things in the entire world. And we are less than 30 days away from season three, which is without a word of a lie my most anticipated season of television in my life. And I like a lot of book to television show adaptations. This I have been waiting for so long. I have been waiting at least like two and a half years for this. So I thought it would be a perfect time to get reacquainted with our favorite family and talk about the entire Bridgerton series, especially because in the last year we got a new book to this series and have a chat about the books, have a chat about the couples, have a chat about what we're excited to see in season three and which order I think you guys should read these books in. Because honestly, they are definitely, definitely, definitely worth the read. I read them early last year and I loved every single one, bar maybe one. Let's get into it. <laughs> For those who do not know what Bridgerton is or, you know, may have seen the books floating around, the show flying, floating around and not really knowing where to start. The Bridgerton series follows a family of eight siblings. They are named from A to H. Each book in the series is essentially one of their individual love stories. It's said in the 1800s, we are in Regency era where a girl is presented to society to then go and find a husband, etc, etc. Think that type of era. I did watch the show first. I absolutely fell in love with the first two seasons, especially Colin Penelope, which really sparked my intrigue when I found out that the third season was going to be based around those two. I picked up the book, which is Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. I read this first and then I went back and read the entire series. I have read this book at least six to seven times. No lie, it is one of my favorite books ever like i put this in my roman empire books there's just something about this book it's so it's so special i love these two so much i i need it to be the 16th of may like right now with that being said there are eight books they're interconnected standalones let's jump into what order you should read the books in so the first book that i think that everybody should start off with when they do read the bridgerton series is queen charlotte now this is new because the television show came out last year in 2023 so the book was written around the screen play if that makes sense or what they did for screen all the other books were previously written before the Bridgerton show and this was a spin-off so it follows Queen Charlotte and King George so it follows their love story about how she met George became queen and becomes this very powerful figure who is very influential in the main Bridgerton series I loved this book so much I don't think I've cried as hard I think the only other book I really sobbed in when I read like the rest of the Bridgerton series was Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. This one, I don't know, there was something so beautiful and romantic and heartbreaking about this that it just took a piece of me. It's such a beautiful book. I loved it so, so, so much. So definitely start here to set yourself up in the world. From here, you are going to want to pick up the very first book in the main Bridgerton series, and this one is called The Duke and I. Now, this one follows Simon and Daphne. Daphne is the eldest daughter in the Bridgerton family, so this is really where you would start if we didn't have the Queen Charlotte book, but I think you should read this one second. So it's our first introduction to the main family, all the siblings, the world, the characters, etc, etc. So this is Simon and Daphne's story. This one was hard to read after I'd watched the show. I think the show definitely expanded upon this love story a lot more, but it was still a really, really good introduction, I should say, and it gets you sort of in that world building for Bridgerton. Now, the third book I think you should read is The Viscount Who Loved Me. Now, this is a lot of people's favorite couple, a lot of people's favorite book. This is Kate and Anthony. So Anthony is the eldest brother. We start to go in alphabetical order now of, of the siblings, if that makes sense. So we go Anthony Bridgerton, he is the Viscount. His father passed away when they were younger and he's had to take over the Viscount position at quite a young age. Um, and this is his story about how he finds his wife. Again, I think this one was elevated a lot more for screen. The book itself is pretty average. I quite liked it though. It did go into a little bit more depth about his love interest, Kate, and her fear of storms and things like that. Anthony Bridgerton, 
I love you, sir. The fourth book you're going to want to read is in my top three out of this entire series, and it is an offer from a gentleman. This is Benedict's story. I love Benedict Bridgerton. He is just my artsy little baby boy. I love him so, so, so much. This is almost like a Cinderella esque retelling if that makes sense or inspired story as you can tell by the little slipper on the front cover there i have a top three i'll tell you my order at the end of the video but this is in my top three i love this couple more than anything and i'm so excited to see their season more than likely season four of bridgerton will be their story it was supposed to be benedict and sophie this season but They've changed the order in the show, which is, not, I'm not complaining because if I had to wait any longer for Colin and Penelope, I'd go insane. This is beautiful. Benedict Bridgerton, you are a poet, an artiste. I love you. Now we get to the main event. For the fifth book, you are going to want to read Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is Colin and Penelope's book. This is my favorite book in the whole series. There's really no lying or competing here. Normally, I'm not a fan of friends to lovers, but there is just something I don't know. There is something about their story that makes me feral. It's the unrequited love the slow burn, childhood friends to lovers, pen pals. It's just so good. And seriously, I have tabbed this so many freaking times. I love it with my entire heart and soul. There's a really nice mystery element that gets unveiled in this book that if you watch the show, you already know what the mystery is. If you haven't watched the show and you're reading the books, a mystery element is unveiled. I'm so, so, so excited for season three. I need to see some mirrors. I need to see some carriages. <laughs> Colin is also my favorite brother, so. Now the sixth book is going to be To Sir Philip With Love, which is Eloise's story. Now I really like Eloise as a character. Eloise is very feminist forward, outside of the box, trying to push the rules of that society. Love her, right? I just hate the turd of a man who is her love interest in this, Mr. Plant Man, Mr. Philip, Sir mm. Philip Crane. I just wanted more for her. This to me is almost like Sound of Music vibes, if that makes sense. It's not my favorite, definitely worth the read because there's a really nice scene with all the brothers and they go to rescue Eloise and it's a, it's a whole thing. Read it for the lore, but it's not my favorite. The seventh book is Francesca's story. It's called When He Was Wicked. Um, and this one's really interesting to me. I really enjoyed this book. It's probably the spiciest out of all of them. This one's interesting because Francesca's story starts very early on in some of the other books, but this is her main love story, if that makes sense. Without giving too much away, her main love story is in this book but her actual out in society-ness starts way earlier in the other books. This was really good too. This is like, I can't say too much about what this one is about without spoiling it. Probably the spiciest, a very interesting character Francesca is as well. Um, and yeah, I really liked it. Eighth book is Hyacinth's book, It's In His Kiss, which before I read Queen Charlotte was definitely in my top three. This was so, 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 so good. There's like a little bit of a mystery element to this one too. Hyacinth is very much the cheeky mystery solver, not troublemaker per se, but she sort of likes to have a bit of fun and muck around a little bit. So this is Hyacinth's book and I loved it. I think the whole, you know, there's, there's a little bit more backstory as well around Violet, the mother and Hyacinth. There's backstory as to why it was hard for the mother Violet to sort of have Hyacinth, etc., etc., And it's such a beautiful like tie up of, of how Violet's feeling and how Hyacinth really helped her and blah, 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 if that makes any sense. So I explained that terribly. I'm really, really sorry about that. Basically what I was trying to say is that with the passing of, you know, her husband, Edmund, Violet, the mum, finds it really hard or found it really hard to sort of go on and live her life because she ended up having her last child, Hyacinth, after her husband passed away so it was really hard for her to like be a mother and get on with her life but what i was trying to say was there's this really beautiful moment where violet and hyacinth have a talk and violet sort of explains to hyacinth how she saved her in all the ways that are important and it was just so special and that's what i was trying to convey i did a terrible job of it yesterday and the very last book there is a final book called happily ever after 
or Bridgerton's Happily Ever After, but they are just all extended epilogues, which you can read in the back of any of the other books. So not really counting that book, but the final book in the series is Gregory's book, and it is on the way to the wedding. Now, we do love Gregory Bridgerton. He is a little shit, a little troublemaker. He is a little prankster, a little jokester, and it's very interesting to see him sort of grown up and have his own love story, the final love story of the whole series and it sort of gets a bit crazy towards the end but I really liked it unexpectedly and yeah like for a character that I didn't really know much about going into it or like caring much about I loved it I ate it up my final ranking of this series will go from my least favorite to my most favorite let's just go and get right on into it so my least favorite of the series was uh, unfortunately Eloise's book uh, to Sir Velvet Would Love just really disappointed me I think I gave it like two stars it really was not the best, but I'd be interested to see what they're going to do with it in the show. Then we have The Duke and I. Then we have The Duke and I, which is Simon and Daphne. Again, nothing too special about these. I just like them a little bit more than uh, To Sir Philip with Love. <laughs> then I have The Viscount Who Loved Me. As much as I love Anthony Bridgerton as a person, I just think that the actual overall story doesn't do it for me. I think I mentioned this earlier too, that I think Kate and Anthony in the show are a lot more interesting to me than Kate and Anthony in the, te uh, in the book, sorry. Then I have When He Was Wicked, which is Francesca's story, which is, the rest of these I just all love so much. Didn't really have too many problems with them. Then we've got On the Way to the Wedding, which is Gregory's story again. I really wonder if we'll ever get to see this one in the show, if it will go on for eight seasons, but um, yeah. Top four, we have It's In His Kiss, which is Hyacinth's book. This used to be in my top three. Really great mystery element to it, and yeah. Top three, this is hard. Picking between my top three and my top two is hard, but anyway, in third spot is an offer from a gentleman, Benedict's story. I really don't have to say too much about this. This is a lot of people's favorite and it was my second favorite last year when I did my original ranking. Who keeps going inside of my freaking house? Like, <laughs> Second favorite is Queen Charlotte. I cannot believe how much I ended up loving this story. I actually like feel like I need to do a reread of it because it was just so beautiful. Like I've tabbed it all and it's just stunning. It is such a beautiful story. And it's like one of those true romances that really rips your heart out. And of course, my favorite book in the whole series is Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. I need the television tying cover. Look, they did Nicola so dirty and it looks horrendous, but I still want the cover. I'm so sorry. This is going to be the focus of Bridgerton season three. Part one comes out on the 16th of May and part two comes out on the 13th of June. I will be fighting Netflix for splitting it into two parts because I have been waiting forever. I've been waiting forever for this and it's gonna be so amazing. And honestly, if you pick up any two books from this whole video, these two. Because like I told you guys earlier in the video too, um, I read this first without reading any of them and chronologically this is book four. So you can read them out of order if you'd want to, but I would recommend definitely these two. Oh my god, my foot is asleep! My foot's asleep. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. What are you guys looking most forward to? Have you read any of the Bridgerton books before? Which ones are your favorites? I'd love to know. I'd love to have a chat to you guys about it because the people that I have spoken to about it have very mixed opinions. A lot of people love some, a lot of people can't stand the others. I am very, very, very excited for Bridgerton season three and I probably won't be shutting up about it. So if you want to chat with me and go crazy as well, let me know. But anyways, hope you guys are having a lovely day. Day, a lovely night wherever you are in the world and I will see you all next time. Bye!